Hello and welcome to Freedom Church Online. My name is Paul and with my wife Karen we're team leaders of Freedom Church. It's great to have you with us. Each week we bring the Word of God and consider how we can apply this to our very lives. If you enjoy our talks, please do consider adding a thumbs up emoji underneath this video. Or do consider sending a message saying how the Lord spoke to you through this. Many people read the messages. It may very well encourage others to listen. You don't know who you will help by leaving a comment or a thumbs up emoji. We would love you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you need not miss the very next message. We recently had a comment from someone in Suffolk. Jesus, our Prince of Peace, despite all the crazy happenings in the world. And they were referring to last week's talk on peace. We are blessed to have you with us today. Welcome. The Bible verse is John 15, 13 to 16. My command is this, that you love each other as I have loved you. Greater love on one this than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my father, I made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Amen. Amen. Can I just take a, a, a moment to pray before we actually start the talk? Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you that we can come into your presence. Lord, it's privileged to be in your presence. Thank you, Jesus, that we can be reconciled to God the Father through you. Thank you that you will call us to bear much fruit in this life. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Would you come and speak to us through this talk? Welcome. We just want to welcome you here, Holy Spirit. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and Amen. We're excited because on the 3rd of August, we will be holding our 12th summer camp on a Christian campsite on the Essex-Suffolk borders here in England. We'll be there for four solid days. We will be gathering as a body of Christ to celebrate Exodus 23, 14 says, three times a year you shall celebrate a feast to me. I've been a little bit flippant in this, but this is our second celebration of the year. Holy Week is the first. Summer Camp is going to be our second, and celebrating the birth of Christ will be our third. So many times in, in the Bible, we are encouraged to celebrate. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to celebrate and rejoice uh, in the Lord over this four days. So many of the Psalms are about rejoicing and celebrating. Psalm 118, 20 verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 34 verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Psalm 2.11. Worship the Lord with reverence and rejoice. Celebrate with trembling. Uh, we had a comment from, from last year's camp. One, one young man expressed the revelation. As I say at the end of last year's camp, he said, 
God can do more in a few days away than he can in a year of Sundays. Amen, yes. And, and this year we have many speakers and in the, an inspired theme. Living in the world, set apart for Christ. And that is our title for this camp, Set Apart for Christ. Here's a quick glimpse of what go, we're going to offer at our camp. The toddlers, we're going to take them for those that's one year to five years of age. Two great play sessions per day on biblical themes. It's just absolutely wonderful what the team draw, uh, draws up here. And then we have children and youth with a full program of Bible teaching and activities. And the activities include such things as low ropes, a zip line going for a long way, and a, then archery. It's just it's going to be action-packed fun for those youth and adults. Uh, for the adults, worship, teaching, seminars. We have everything packed into these four days. Two seminars that I'm really particularly looking forward to. Uh, one is entitled How to Keep a Prayer Journal. I'm really interested in that one. And Praying Until Breakthrough Comes. That sounds really exciting to me. Don't we all need a breakthrough? And here we have this, um, well, I can only call her a worship, uh, a worship prayer warrior coming over from Florida in America. And, and she's just going to, it's going to be good. I know it is. We're privileged that people are coming from Germany, from Serbia and from America. Yes, we will be celebrating. It's going to be great. And it's right to celebrate, for Jesus Christ saved us from our sin. He saved us from our sin. But we realise that in the title of our camp, there is a challenge set apart for Christ. But 1 Corinthians 5a encourage us. Therefore, let us keep the festival not with the old bread unleavened, with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So here lies the big challenge to us and all, even if you're not coming to our camp. Sincerity and truth. How do we live in this? Sincerity and truth. Sincerity is described in the Oxford Dictionary as the absence of uh, pretense, deceit or hypocrisy. Or to put it into a context, the sincerity of his beliefs is unquestionable. In our words, we, we, we're not only just to read what the Bible says, but we have to live it in our life. It is so easy to say one thing and do something quite different. And, and I know that's something that I personally have to be quite careful about. Of not doing and making promises and then not keeping them. One thing is a positive God. Will, he will be faithful to you. Come what may. That's a positive out of this. Humanly speaking... Who else can we count on? Paul writes in Philippians 21, 22. Everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. Paul knew he could count on Timothy. Who can you count on? And can you be counted on? They're good questions. I find them challenging in my own walk. So let's look at the theme for our summer camp a little bit more. In order to fill, fulfill God's plan for our life, we must establish clear priorities and live them each day. That is, 
why we are going to this camp. We want to be set apart. We want to fulfill God's plan for our lives, to work with him, with Jesus Christ, and not against him. Uh, a, a famous author once uh, quipped, a conclusion is the place where you get tired of thinking. Sadly, many people arrive at priorities based on where they ran out of steam. And we definitely do not want to do that. Do we? I don't. Nor do we want to allow others to decide our, our agenda and our priorities. Many ways exist for determining our priorities. So I'm just going to look at a quick couple here. First and foremost, our plan must always line up with God's purpose for us. Hebrews 13, 20 to 21 says, Now, now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. He has a role for each one of us to fulfill. One that is fruitful. Jesus said in John 15, 16, I choose you and appoint you that you should go and bear fruit and your fruit should remain. In other words, should be eternal. We must know deep down inside that God has chosen and appointed us to a particular area of service. It might not seem that our lives are not very fruitful or our present job is tedious, not exciting enough, perhaps even boring. But can I encourage you, like me, you might still be in the Lord's potting shed, waiting. And that can be frustrating. But I'm absolutely sure that good fruit, if your heart is right for God, if your heart is right for God, I truly believe that you cannot go wrong. If your heart is right for God, you cannot make a wrong step. And good fruit comes out of the potting shed, out of his potting shed, where he's training us. We can think we are ready for anything, but God is patiently working in us and through us. And he will make sure that we will be able to cope with what he has for us. This is most important to be in a place where we cannot do what he has called us to do. Physically, we should not be able to do it. I know that sounds crazy and daft, but we need to be reliant on the Holy Spirit to do what he's called us to do. If we can do it without him, we don't need him. And the fruit produced without the Holy Spirit will not be eternal. It'll be temporal. Challenging. I love the part in the book of Joshua, Joshua 5, 13 to 15. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went to him and asked, are you for us or are you for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the Lord I have come now. Then Joshua fell face down on the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? And this is where I'm just going to inject my thoughts here. You see, I think Joshua thought that the angel, the angel messenger was going to give him instruction of how to take Jericho. But the angel replied 
take off your sandals for the place where you're standing is holy. This, uh, I said a couple of weeks ago, that this was confirmation to Joshua that he was meeting with God. As Joshua would have known how Moses got his calling from God in front of the burning bush. But I also think that God was saying to Joshua, you haven't got to do anything, Joshua. You have just got to be reverent and watch what I'm going to do before your eyes. In other words, just worship God. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And that's what we're called to do today. Keep our eyes on Jesus. When we reach the inner knowledge that we can do so little in this world, yet with God working through us, miracles can and do happen. We are ready for the Lord to work powerfully through us. Fruitful and fulfilling it will be. There is simply no comparison to a life lived in our own strength. We must know that God has chosen and appointed us to a particular area of service. And all of life is service. We have given our life over to him and made him Lord of our life. And we're not in disobedience. He will positively guide our steps. Simply, we do not know the future. He does. He will guide our steps all the way. Looking at the Joshua generation and reading Judges 2.10, I think they failed. And this brings me to my second point. A goal in our life should be to produce fruit that remains after we're not here, after we've been called to heaven, that we pass on the baton to the younger generation. Judges 2.10 gives this warning and the book of Judges follows on from the, the, that. This follows on from all that I took place in the book of Joshua. Quite incredible. And it says, after that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he'd done for Israel. In other words, the Joshua generation did not raise up the children in the love and the nurture of the Lord. They were more comfortably off than their ancestors in the wilderness. But this comfort meant that they did not have the same urgency, the same oomph for God. And unwittingly, they passed this complacently, complacency onto their children. I mean, when life is comfortable, the greatest danger is that we live our life our way. And our choices reveal we don't really need God. And our children experience this too. We do need him, but we get lured away from him very gradually. As to say so well in Pilgrim's Progress, my favourite book, the allegory describes how the green grass along the rocky path looks so inviting that they were running alongside each other. And because this rocky flint path was so painful to his feet, Christian stepped across and off, onto the, off the path and onto the grass. And it was so much nicer, the soft grass beneath his feet. Before long, he realised that the grass and the rocky path had gone in different directions and he had not noticed. The grass had led him, time, led him in time to spend time in Doubting Castle. And if we have children, we will lead them to. That's a very dangerous place. 
it is imperative that we do not lead our children into Doubting Castle, that the baton we pass on to them is one of faith in Jesus Christ, on of the fruitfulness in the kingdom of God, as in Ephesians 6. We can do this. We can do this. This, things like money and influence, lead, can lead to a more comfortable life. But they must never be our goal, our heart's desire, or distract us away from God's call on our lives. We may be able to give our children lots of opportunities and things perhaps we might never have had. But it must never be the experience of a life of faith in Christ. We need that. If we want to live in sincerity and truth, we need to stay close to the one who is sincere and who is the truth. It's challenging. I'm a bit of a list maker. I, I need things to be written down uh, and I need them in black and white. So, you know, pen and piece of paper. Many years ago, I wrote out, I wrote out several lists. I wrote out who I knew, what things I like doing, what I'm good at, and yeah, and what skills have I got? I wrote them down in, in, a, in those four different lists. This was at a time of my life that I was really searching. I didn't, certainly didn't know what I was searching. Yes, before I knew Christ, but actually I still use these lists today. Establishing my priorities, the right priorities for me. We need to know ourselves. We need to focus on our strengths and the things that make the best of our God-given skills and situations. Those are your core gifts. Why don't you? We need to utilize the 80-20 rule, don't we? Give 80% of your effort to the top 20% of your activities. There are some things on that list that I just don't bother doing now. Jesus said, you, you are to give your attention to the areas that bear the most fruit. John 15, 16 says, I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. The fruit that is going to last is our children. How are we investing in the kingdom of God? and in them? Or should, perhaps the question should be, is sincerity and truth to Jesus Christ unquestionable in our own lives? I believe this summer camp is going to be quite challenging, not just for those that are coming along, but also for myself. Perhaps you might like to join us.